Hi everyone. Today I have brought a wonderful question where we are going to apply Snell's law in kinematics. It's a wonderful concept, so I hope you all will enjoy. The question says a man walks on the hard ground with a speed of five feet per second, but he has speed of three feet per second on the sand ground. This means on sand ground he is moving slower. This is very similar to how light travels. slower in water than compared to air right suppose he is standing at the border of sandy and hard ground and wishes to reach a tree situated on the sandy ground the man can reach the tree by walking 100 feet along the border and 120 feet on the sandy ground normal to the border normal here means perpendicular to the border find out how much length the man has to walk on the border so that he reaches the tree in the minimum time let's understand the question through this diagram this is the border separating sandy ground and hard ground in hard ground his speed is 5 feet per second in sandy ground his speed is 3 feet per second the man can walk 100 feet along the border and then walk 120 feet perpendicular to the border to reach a tree on the sandy ground now the question is how much he should move along the border and then go towards the tree so that he takes in this path minimum time so we need to find this length which he has to walk on the border so that he takes minimum time to reach the tree now to solve this question we are going to use snell's law now you may be thinking how snell's law comes in this problem well there is a principle called fermat's principle which says light while traveling from one point to another point chooses that path which takes minimum time let me repeat when light travels from one point to another point it will take that path which takes minimum time now if you want to read about this it is mentioned in our ncert textbook i will mention the page number you can read now what this means is if there is a boundary separating two different medium let's say this is denser medium glass or water and this is rarer medium air now to reach from here to here light will take that path which takes minimum time now if the two medium were same obviously light would go straight that would take minimum time if the two medium were same right but these two mediums are different therefore there will be refraction and how much will be refraction how much will be bending that is controlled by snell's law right so how do we write snell's law here well the incident ray is in which medium having refractive index n1 so we write n1 sin i equals n2 sin r Let us write this Snell's law in terms of the speed of light. So here the speed is v1. So n1 can be written as speed of light in vacuum by speed of light in that medium into sin i equal to speed of light in vacuum by speed of light in that medium into sin i. See, gets cancelled. So if you cross multiply, your Snell's law will be v2 sin i equals v1 sin r. now please understand light follows reversibility principle and that means if light can go this way light can come also this way in other words if this was angle of incidence this will be angle of refraction right now if you notice angle r is more than angle i and as you increase angle i angle r will also increase because these two are proportional so as angle i increases angle r also increases so when angle r becomes 90 degree right here angle r is 90 degree that time the angle of incidence is called critical angle so when i is c so if i replace here by c your r will be 90 degree now remember light follows reversibility principle so therefore if i is 90 degree r will be c okay so keep that in mind now let's come back to the original question the question was how much this man should move along the border so that he will reach the tree in minimum time 
so this is the path the man should travel so that he takes minimum time so we need to find this distance how much he should move along the border now just like light has different speed in the two media and it chooses that path which is given by snell's law which takes minimum time so similarly we have to find that distance which takes minimum time for this man and he has different speed in the two media right so we will apply snell's law here to find this distance so if you consider this as the incident ray then this will be your normal right and you can see the angle between incident ray and normal is 90 degree so angle of incidence is 90 degree this is your refracted ray this is your normal so this is your angle of refraction apply snell's law we will apply snell's law with velocity because we know the velocity of the man so what was Snell's law in terms of velocity? V2 sin i equals V1 sin i. So substitute V2, 3, i is 90 degree, V1 is 5 sin of r. Sin 90 degree is 1, so sin of r will be 3 by 5. Now, if this angle is r, this angle will be also r. And if this is x, this was given 100, so this side will be 100 minus x. Now, this side and this side can be connected by tan of r, right? So, tan of r will be opposite side is 100 minus x, adjacent side is 120. Now, students, we know sin r, but here we need tan r. Well, sin r 3 by 5 means if I draw a triangle and this angle is r, then sin r is opposite by hypotenuse. So, opposite side is 3, hypotenuse is 5. Then this side from Pythagoras theorem we know should be 4. So, what will be 10 R opposite by adjacent? So, 3 by 4 equals to 100 minus X by 120. Then you can simplify. 4 3s are 12. 0 cross multiply. 90 equal to 100 minus X. So, X will be 100 minus 90 which is equal to 10 bit. So, the man has to travel 10 feet here and then the remaining distance he has to travel in sand and that way he will take minimum time.